Okay, so I'll write this problem up as you're doing that. Now we have a collision type problem. You have a two kilogram object going and uh, at the speed of three meters per second. You have a 10 kilogram uh, uh, rod that is uh, uh, four meters long and uh, the two kilogram object comes and hits the four, uh, 10 kilogram rod and sticks to it. So inelastic collision. Okay, and sticks to it. I have to give you this distance too. Uh, let's say, um, so 0.9 meters. So now I want you to find the final velocity. What's going to happen? I've talked about this before, right? Remember I said uh, that in this case, the whole system is going to translate. And it's going to rotate. Remember I was saying it's going to have two kinds of kinetic energies. Translational and rotational. Okay. So uh, now what's going to happen here is some, somewhat interesting here. As this sticks to it, it's going to shift the center of mass of the system. It's going to be somewhere here, the new center of mass. So the original center of mass was at the center of the rod. The center of mass of the system is going to shift up there. So therefore, the object is going to translate V center of mass prime. That's the new center of mass. So it's going to have a V center of mass prime. And on top of it, it's going to rotate around that new center of mass, omega final. So I want you to find V center of mass prime and omega final and the percent loss of kinetic energy. Find omega final, V center of mass prime and uh, percent loss of Ke. Okay. okay, we need to find the new center of mass of the system before we do anything, okay? The new center of mass right here. So we need to use what we learned in chapter 9 again. Okay, how do you get the center of mass? Y center of mass equals to, now I can put the x and y axis right here. And I can say uh, the center of mass of the rod is at its center, so that's zero. The center of mass of the uh, two kilogram is, uh, the two kilogram is here. And its distance from the xy axis, that's 0.9 meters. So 2 kilograms times, well, let me write it on this side so it doesn't look like 0.2. 2 kilogram. So 2 kilograms times 0.9 divided by the total mass of the system which is 2 plus uh, 10, right? So that's going to equal uh, 2 over 12, which is 1 sixth, 0.9 over 6. Point one five meters. OK, so the center of mass of the new system becomes 0.15 meters up from uh, where it was. So it's, that's 15 centimeters. So if this thing hits the 90 centimeter mark, the center of mass is going to go up 15 centimeters. And it's going to rotate around that point. So then uh, let's do this. Uh, let's find the V center of mass. We know that in this problem, linear momentum is going to be conserved. Okay, This is linear momentum conservation. You got the momentum of this transferring into the momentum of the system, you see? So P initial total 
is equal to P final total. So P initial total, well, we're assuming the ruler was not moving at the beginning. Only the two kilogram object was. So two times three is the uh, initial momentum of the incoming object. That's equal to the final momentum of the system, which is 2 plus 10, that's uh, 12 kilograms, times V center of mass prime. And that's, that's it for linear momentum. The system has a mass of 12 kilograms, and it moves, translates at a velocity of V center of mass prime. So that's going to be 6 over 12, that's 0.5 meters per second. So that one was easy. It's easy to find the final velocity, V center of mass. So actually, we could have done that before we did the center of, uh, the Y center of mass. Okay? The harder one is to find the omega final. Okay? To do that, you have to do L initial total equals L final total. You have to conserve angular momentum of the system. Okay, now what was the initial angular momentum of the system? Okay, so look, go back to the original problem here. What was the initial angular momentum of the system? This might be deceiving, because looking at the rod, it's not rotating. Looking at the uh, two kilogram object, it's not rotating either. So it looks like as if the initial angular momentum is zero, but it's not, okay? It's not zero. As a matter of fact, if it was zero, when this thing hit that thing, it wouldn't even make it spin, you know? The reason it's not zero is because this thing is hitting this thing off of the center, you see? If it, was, if it hit it at the center, if it hit it right at the center, then L initial will be zero. And therefore, when it hits, it'll just go straight. You know, it's like taking a ruler. Do I have a ruler here or any other object? Let's say I take this object and I just hit it at the center. Okay? And I can avoid it rotating at all, you see? It did really rotate. It's kind of hard to find the exact center, but once you hit the exact center, it should just translate, right? But if you hit the off of the center, it's going to spin, right? Why? Because I impart to it an initial angular momentum, the, the initial angular momentum. How do we find that initial angular momentum? The initial angular momentum is uh, we use this formula. R crossed into P. So let, let's just focus on the on this part here for a sec. If you have an object, and there's another object here that goes this way, M V, and it hits this object, how do we get its angular momentum? Well, the R is the vector from the, the center of mass here. to the object, and then mv is this vector. So the, uh, the angular momentum is the cross product of R, uh, R and P. So the magnitude of the angular momentum is R P sine theta. Okay, so we have here R and then P is equal to mv. Now here's how I'm gonna write this, look. R sine of theta, I'm going to write it as a separate entity. So I'm going to have here R, V, and then theta is this angle. 